Greg Brady, man, they do not build them like that anymore. I used to sit in class and doodle in my notebook. Mrs. Greg Brady. Mrs. Kristen Brady. Mrs. Kristen Carlson Brady. I still think it could work. When I was growing up, this was my favorite show. No, it's more than a show, Eileen. It's a way of life. Whenever I have a problem that seems insurmountable, I turn to the Brady Bunch for guidance. Like now, but not even they can help me with this. What is it? It's the worst history paper ever written. In a cruel twist of fate, I am its author. I got an F. And to make matters worse, Mr. Mr. Crutchfield, my history teacher, wants mom and dad to sign it. Why don't you just tell your parents that you're sorry and you'll work harder next time? Oh, yeah, sure, that would work. If my parents were Carol and Mike Brady. Ross, come on, this is not the end of the world. And listen, no matter what happens, we're here for you. I'm falling more in love with you And day by day My love seems to grow There isn't any end to my devotion It's deeper, dear, by far than any ocean I find that day by day Everybody and welcome to a very special podcast. This is the podcast eh, where we watch your favorite TV shows from yesteryear and then black out and discuss them. Did I say that right? Did I do it right? Uh, kind of, yeah. I think so. I think you got it. I don't know. I, um, I've been sick all week. I've had like the sniffles and stuff, so I apologize in advance if I sniffle. And my throat hit like will just every now and then get scratchy and then like I can't talk. And I just start coughing on control So this could be the most disgusting sounding podcast of all time. Oh, I'm sure we could find ones that sound way more disgusting. Yeah, probably. And they're probably ones we've recorded. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. But if this is your first time at the Rodeo, I am Patrick M. Dunn. You might remember me from the previous 28, 29-ish episodes of this podcast. Um, I have a Twitter account. It's uh, at Patrick M. Dunn. And I'm joined here, as always, by the author, Kat Halstead. She's got books. She's got a website. What else you got? What, what do you got going on right now? Uh, oh, gosh. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Uh, there's website, cathalstead.com, Twitter, at CatDVS. Uh, and there's stuff going on check the websites for more information she's got like an audiobook and shit all kinds of crazy stuff if i don't like kill myself doing this stupid audiobook so she writes books she's an off the war and um she's experimenting in audiobooks and i have an idea where i think that i should get drunk and then try to read the books so, you can, so like as like a bonus feature you can like purchase the the drunk version which I think is a great idea. I don't. I don't know what anyone else thinks. Probably be better than the version I'm putting together right now. Like it's fun, like novelty wise. I think. Yeah. So you're totally. doing it now with your short story, The Spirit Board, which is like very Halloween esque. I know Halloween is now yes, over, is. but I mean, I guess you can like you can well, watch horror movies around. Bro. In the in the real world, Halloween is over. In our broadcast world, it's still two weeks out. Yeah, but I mean, so, you can oh well. you can like watch scary movies all year round. It's like not specifically designated for Halloween, correct? Correct. I I haven't read this book. I'm gonna I'm gonna read it aloud for the first time very shortly. He's so. had like a copy that I gave him for like a year, and uh, he still hasn't read it. It's, Thanks, Patrick. It's so far back in my uh, like Facebook chat with you that I, you're going to have to send it again. <laughs> of course it is. Um, what's, what's a 
we can we can buy it at cathalstead.com. It's at cathalstead.com, Amazon.com, Barnes and Noble, Smashwords. It's called the Spirit Board. So it's only like ninety nine cents for right. a digital copy. You know, I might just buy it just so I can have it on my iPad because then I'll find it again. So and then, then I'll you'll just it. like randomly stumble upon it and be like, oh, here it is, finally. <laughs> so. In case you missed the intro to the podcast, this is the podcast where we talk about your favorite TV shows or your not-so-favorite TV shows or just things you might not even ever heard of that you maybe wanted to have watched but just don't have the time, but we'll take you through it. Yeah. We are dedicated to watching television, good or bad, and then discussing it over pretty much during a blackout. So what are you drinking tonight? Yeah. I am drinking the apple pie sangria. The recipe is on our website and our YouTube account. Oh, what's our website again? A very special podcast.tumblr.com. And I believe there's we have articles, our episodes, recipes. Uh, I don't even know what else. What else is there? Oh gosh, we have the recipes. We have links to all the episodes on iTunes and YouTube. So you can listen pretty much any way you want to listen. You can listen to us. And we have some bonus articles every once in a while. Yeah, I have a few, so. in, I have a few in the pipeline. I'm sure by the time this episode airs, they'll be out. I just have to go through and proofread. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, I have a few drafts written that I haven't typed up, so. Yeah, um, me too. I, I start, and then I'm like, I like it at the time. Then I go, you know what? I might not like this tomorrow. Then I go back and I read it again and go, yeah, I don't like it. And, then. Yeah, exactly. I had a few where I was like, what the hell was I drinking when I wrote this? Oh, yeah, I was drinking that Long Island iced tea at the ground round when I wrote that. <laughs> well, my idea is because we take rigorous notes when we do the podcast, but sometimes we go on a million tangents. So we never like cover everything. So I kind of like would like it to eventually be like the things we forgot to talk about on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of read about it. Or maybe we can do like bullet points. I don't know. We're, we're still kind of experimenting. That would be a good idea. We'll have to uh, think about doing that. Bullet points, just so you can kind of be like, oh yeah, shit, we were talking about um, Jared Leto's jacket in the My So Called Life episode. Jared Leto, shout out! Ooh, ooh, the Joker! One we'll day Jared Leto is going to hear one of our podcasts, and he's going to be like, why are they so obsessed with me? Um, and it probably... It, uh... Which one do you think you'll find? Because I think we, like, creepily talk about him in one of the earlier ones. <laughs> we talk about him in so many. I, I think we got very deep in a Jared Leto discussion. Yeah, we probably have. I don't know. Maybe we'll just have to do, like, a Jared Leto month where we just do it's Jared just Leto Jared shows Leto's and time. movies. Uh, and television appearances. <laughs> we'll do it when the Suicide Squad comes out. How about that? That sounds good. When does that even come out? I have no idea. I think it comes up like in like March, maybe. Um, let's ask Google. Okay. Oh, we also ask Google questions. When does Suicide Squad come out? Suicide Squad will be released in the United States of America on August fifth, twenty sixteen. Oh, August. No. Yeah. August twenty fifteen. August 2016, oh. August 5th, 2016. So it's like an end of summer blockbuster. Well, I think um, yeah. Batman versus Superman's coming out next summer too, so maybe they need to like, the, let the heat die down and then Suicide, Suicide Squad comes out. Yeah, they probably got to do that at the start of the summer and then lead into Suicide Squad. We'll let the dust settle from that big epic battle. What yeah, is I don't even understand it. I'm like, oh, I've lost control of what comic books I kept up with as a kid. Uh... Yeah, I'm mostly into the Marvel saga, so I'm not really like fully sold on DC yet, but we'll figure it out. I don't know. Yeah. We'll get next August, um, all month long. It's it's the Jared Leto Dog Days of Summer. I don't know what to call it yet. We'll we'll our marketing we'll, intern will figure it out. We'll brainstorm it and uh we'll send it off to the interns. Yes. And if you want to be an intern, tweet us at very podcast. We won't pay you, but we'll make you do meaningless tasks for us, like <laughs> order me things online. <laughs> Gosh, Patrick. Send me cake. <laughs> okay, what, are, what show are we doing today? Alright, so tonight we watched, 
Well, we didn't watch it tonight. I watched it yesterday. Uh, we watched a show called Day by Day. Yes, we watched Day by Day. Day by Day. So I had, all right. So I had never heard of the show prior to this podcast. I knew nothing of it. What about you? I remember watching this particular episode as a kid. Like, I know I watched the show. The only memory I have of this show is of this episode. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. And so so, let's just spoil things here in case you, like, don't read the episode title or the description. The show is called Day by Day. It's a Family Ties spinoff or... Like a sequel or... I don't know. It's, it's Yeah, it's a spinoff. Like, it was like one of those... They did the backdoor pilot kind of thing. And then they just kind of went with the family that the show took place about. But they decided to do um, a dream sequence episode. This is So this is our second dream sequence episode. Yes, it is. And, and it's also one that takes two shows. So we get to talk about two different shows at once. And we'll probably mostly talk about the show that it sequences into more than the actual show like we did last time. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> so Oh, sh- well. So this episode of Day by Day does a dream sequence where one of the characters is in an episode of The Brady Bunch, basically. Yeah, exactly. J- just like if you go back and like go to our iTunes account, our ALF episode... Elf daydreamed that he was in an episode of Gilligan's Island. So it's kind of like a weird symmetry kind of thing. And I believe that was our just after Halloween last year, wasn't it? I think it was, actually, yeah. So coincidentally, we it, do... It's just a happy accident. <laughs> it's a weird accident that we do, like, a title character is in another show. So maybe that's, like, a theme that we can do from now on. Like, every... We come off... We come out of, um... The Halloween. Halloween hangover? Yeah, like, I'm sure there's, like, that 70s shows that have done, like, weird things like this and millions of other shows. I feel like there's, like, a Mary Tyler Moore one for some reason. Like, someone imagines they're in Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah, probably. I, I feel like this was kind of, like, a hot thing to do in the 80s where the characters are, like, transported to another show. I, I think Baywatch did an episode where they were, like, on Gilligan's Island. Oh, we have to find that, definitely. And I know Roseanne actually did Gilligan's Island as well. So Yeah, they did. Was it a Halloween one, or was that that weird last No, it was that? not a Halloween one. It was just, like, a random one. I think... Actually, you know, I don't know when. It was probably that final season where they decided... They just did, like, skits. It, it was not the final season. It was when David was still in high school. Oh, I don't think even think I know this. I don't know. Well, maybe we'll save it for next year. Who knows? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I've I got a lot of Roseanne trivia in my head. It's just a little fuzzy sometimes. But we could just get really excited and just do it in like three months, so. That's true. <laughs> Who knows? All right, so th- this show, Day by Day, it like it was on in like 1989 or 1990-ish. Yeah, it was like 89, 88 to 89 kind of thing. So probably like... 90, so- Tail end of the decade. So, like, synced up with, like, the end of Family Ties, basically. Like, the end of the run. Yes, exactly. And the premise... So, the premise of the show... I don't even... I don't think, think I understand the premise of the show. Okay, so you have these two parents. Brian, who is a stockbroker, and Kate, who is a lawyer. And they have these great high power jobs. They've got a teenage son, Ross, who is basically our main character for this episode. And he, so they've got this one kid, they've got these great jobs and everything's going swell. Oops. Kate gets knocked up again and has a little baby. And they both decide to leave these like high paying jobs to open a daycare in their house. And they get and, Courtney Thorne Smith to be one yes. of the, the daycare teachers, I guess is what you call them. Yes, you get um, Courtney Thorne Smith playing Kristen, who works in the daycare. And of course, Ross has a crush on her. Okay, yeah, she's sexy. I, I and they have the um, next door neighbor, Eileen, 
who used to work with Brian at the stockbroker firm or whatever. And she is played by Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Julia Louis-Dreyfus, probably like fresh-ish off her Saturday Night Live gig. This is definitely... Yeah, it's probably like she got off Saturday Night Live. She got this show. This one does not make it. And then she gets tossed onto Seinfeld. Do you know what's really scary? And I thought about this today. Imagine if Day by Day was like a big hit. And then she wasn't available for Seinfeld. Oh my God! Who would have been Elaine? Elaine. <laughs> like I had a panic attack just thinking about this. I was like, "Fuck!" I was like, "What if Day by Day ended up being like a and hit, not like a two season wonder?" And yeah, Elaine was oh not Elaine. Julia Louis Dreyfus was not available to play the role of Elaine. Like I don't know. They like, I shudder to think about this. Like. The the stars perfectly aligned. They really did. So this show, Day by Day, was only on for like two years, right? I believe... Th- yeah, it was like one short season and one like okay-ish length season. Like, there's not that many episodes. Yeah, and like this 30. is basically... This is the only one I could even find. I'm sure the show is probably mostly forgettable. Judging yeah. by the horrible theme song that like introduced the show... <laughs> Oh my god, the theme was awful. Like, we... Alright, so we have done some bad things. We did The Monsters today. Yes. We did Small Wonder. Yes. Which, both of those shows had, like, hideous theme songs. Like, there was nothing memorable about them. But they're catchy, damn it. Um, like, yeah. They are so catchy. I still get the Small Wonder theme song stuck in my head from when we did that episode. Uh, I didn't think it was that memorable though. Like it did, it didn't last with me. Like the original Monsters theme song, like from the '60s version of the show, very yeah. memorable. But then in the like the late '80s like remake they did, they like added lyrics to it, which just kind of ruined it. Yeah. Oh, totally understandable. Yeah. But the di- the day by day theme song kind of has like they do like a weird calendar effect. Like I guess it's supposed to be like a, a calendar that they show. And yeah, it's really weird. And they're going through it like day by day. And then like the, the mm-hmm. screen above is like the month, the month picture, but it's just the moving pictures of all the characters that are on the show. Yeah. And it's like got that weird pastel, like Saved by the Bell type graphics. Yeah. Like those like Trapper Keeper-esque graphics. Yeah. Like the, they're like neon colors and gr- a lot of grays. Was there a lot of grays I felt like? There, I think it was more like pastel but because the video quality isn't that great either. Okay, it yeah, maybe I'm colorblind. It looks great to me. Maybe you are. That would actually explain a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to like match like shirts with pants. I just like I I can't figure it out. I d- I don't really care to be honest with you. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I'm over it. It's not gonna it's not gonna kill me. I'll just be like horribly fashion desensed <laughs> I guess <laughs> I have no idea. I was like I don't know where she's going <laughs> yeah I didn't know where I was going with it either um so we have the theme song this, the actual song is not memorable at all like no it's really nice it's not even anything that like gets stuck in your head for like the next 24 hours I don't even remember how it went to be honest with you I don't either but all right, so we watched the episode. You can find it on YouTube. Yes. You can just just write day by day Brady Bunch is be the only thing that comes up. Yes, it is the <laughs> only thing, and it is amazingly ridiculous. All right, so the episode starts with the character Ross. Yes, and he's, Ross. He's sitting in his kitchen. He has one of those like handheld old like you know those like old handheld TV like. What are they? Yeah. Watchmen's? What do they call them? I don't even know. Like, there's just one of those handheld portable TVs that is probably has a tinier screen than like our cell phones do now. Exactly. And, and it's just like, it is probably black and white. Oh, totally. It's yeah, I don't think heavy. they were color. It's probably heavy. Yeah, it's probably heavy. It's got the antenna you got to pull up and like try and find the signal. Because it's portable, you can't hook it up to your cable. <laughs> Yeah, and it takes those big batteries that you hate to buy because nothing like else takes those size batteries exactly. so you never have them handy. 
They're not like exactly. double A. <laughs> so he's sitting at the, the kitchen table and he's watching the Brady Bunch and the theme song starts to play. So he starts singing along. And then Kristen comes in and she like comes and she looks and she starts singing the theme song as well. And then Eileen comes in and she starts singing the song. So you've got like these three people around a kitchen table on this tiny little itty bitty TV singing the Brady Bunch thing, theme song. And they're kind of like snapping and like tapping their yeah, hands. Yeah, they're like it. dancing and playing. There's no like little kicks though. There's no little kicks. No, there should have been an Elaine kick, but I guess this is pre Elaine though. But <laughs> there were like I the second time I watched it, I kind of kind of noticed there's a little bit of the thumb. Oh, I'll have to watch that again. Maybe we can do maybe like, we can do just like a, a special. Bit, not like anything major, but maybe we can do like a blog like, post. Hmm. <laughs> but um, I like if you ever walked into a room and someone was watching the Brady Bunch on a tiny little like TV screen or even just a regular TV screen, I would never be like that captivated by the theme song that it would draw me in that I'd have to like dance and sing along to it. Yeah, I don't think I would have to go over to the TV. Like, I could probably be in the background being like, the Brady Bunch, the Brady Bunch, but I wouldn't be, like, right in there. Like, you know, because it's the theme song everybody knows. <laughs> and then... If you don't, I'm, like, worried where you've been, like, your entire life that you've never heard this theme song. And then, do you know what's even funnier? What? Right after they sing their Brady Bunch theme song... They pretty much just cut, like, right into the actual Brady Bunch theme song again. Yes! <laughs> because the character Ross, he falls asleep. He's doing homework at the kitchen table. Well, actually, he's supposed to be doing homework. Mm-hmm. And, but he, there's a Brady Bunch marathon on. Like, I guess it's, like, a week of the Brady Bunch or something. Yeah, it's just, like, this whole, like, they're airing every single episode of the Brady Bunch Back to back on some random channel he gets. So that's all he's doing with his free time. Even like, that's why he probably has a portable TV. He's probably like that guy sitting in the study hall with like the little earbud thing they had back then, like watching the Brady Bunch on his little TV instead of doing his history paper. Yeah, doesn't actually, I think later on in the episode, does, don't they show him with the headset on, like a weird little ear, yeah. earpiece? Yeah. It's just like, I remember this earpiece because my mother had it and she used to like hook it into the TV to watch Dynasty or something <laughs> in the dining room and while my grandfather was watching TV in the living room. But yeah, it's like this weird earpiece thing. It's kind of like an earbud, like earbuds. But it wasn't as comfortable. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And it was just like on one ear, so it wasn't like stereo sound. It kind of looked like a seashell, like a weird little seashell that you put in your ear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it never fit, so like it was either too it, like it was too big, so it just kind of like dangled in your ear, and you had to like kind of like tie the the cord around. You kind of just like gotta like hold it in or something. And then like it had like a big hole in it. <laughs> yeah, there's like this big hole. Exactly. Yeah. Like a sound hole. Is that what it's called? I guess. It was like a urethra. <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, so well, he's like, got this, it's like before school. And he's like, oh, I need my parents to sign this paper because I got an F on it. And like, his parents give him a hard time, especially because the teacher is supposed to be like, one of the easiest grading teachers, like, ever. Yeah, they called him, like, Easy A, like, Al or something. He was, like, something. Yeah, it was something, like, really ridiculous. And the teacher wrote on that the paper made him nauseous. Because <laughs> he was using, like, Bon Jovi lyrics He's like to try and, like, describe whatever he was writing about. Yeah, I think, it, like, he was, like, and to quote John Bon Jovi. And he, like, had, like, a lyric from a John a Bon Jovi song. Yeah. And then I believe Ross mentions that he wrote this paper on the bus. He's like, I thought it was pretty good for writing it on the bus. <laughs> yeah, you sh maybe shouldn't have told your parents you wrote it on the bus. Oh, I, if, I would have never done that. <laughs> yeah, I never would have been like, oh, yeah, I wrote this like this 10 minutes in the morning when I was sitting in the cafeteria with my friends before the bell rang. Oh, well, let me like, rephrase I that. Tell my dad that. I mean, I did most of my homework in that like 10, 20 minutes before school started. Oh, yeah. Or like during lunch. <laughs> 
Yeah, let me rephrase it. I would have written the paper on the bus, but I would not have told my parents I wrote on the bus. But I didn't yeah. ride the bus, so but I had that like yeah, like that weird. Like, it was called study, <laughs> yeah. study hall, and it was basically like a twenty, like a fifteen twenty minute period before like actual classes started that I did all my homework really fast or copied off yeah. somebody. Yeah, like. Well, the first high school I went to, class didn't start until, like, 8.15 or something in the morning. So you get there, like, 7.50. You have all this time before then to, like, sit and you can fin- do your homework before class starts. And then, okay, yeah, you get, like, a bunch of stuff done. And then maybe you do some during lunch. And unless it's, like, really intensive after that, you don't have to do your homework. Yeah, like if you. I had never a... had to do my homework like at home. That's why I was on AOL talking to you. Yeah. Well, I would do it like during. I would like let's say you, all right. So you had like that study hall period. So I would do like my like mm-hmm. first and second period like homework during that time, and then like if you had a class at like noon or something, you would just do like that during that homework during other classes. Yeah. Because. I don't know, like, you would just be, like, sitting in, like, boring lectures, and you pre- pretended to take a notes, but you're really just doing homework for other classes. That's why I always, like, walk around the book bag instead of just bringing, like, one book to class. I was, like, I had all my shit in there. Yeah, see, I, I, I did have a study hall freshman year. Well, but even then, like, it was just, like, you got most of your stuff done then. And then you finished up whatever else you needed to do in the morning. And then when I moved to Colorado, I had like a whole like hour or two yeah, but like, of like free out free periods where I could do my homework. Yeah, well, like study hall was for like your math class because math always took longer for some reason. Mm-hmm. So like you would have to do like problems and shit. But like your other classes, like you know, like it was like like English stuff would always be like vocabulary like things you had to do. So it was just like circle and answers and stuff like that. Nothing like too intensive. Yeah. I just did my yeah. first sniffle of this podcast, by the way. If you did not hear it. I tried to do, like, sly. I was like... I did not hear it at all. <laughs> Hold on. There you go. See, that one I heard. Okay. <laughs> I tried to do, like, a, like a soft sniffle. I keep catching my... I keep hearing, like, my own weird breathy gas things that I caught when I was listening to my audio recording the other day. So I'm like, crap! No. What you are know, those things? Do you know what's annoying me though? Is um, so I I updated the uh, Mac software to like El Capitan or whatever it's called, and now I can hear myself. Like before, I was I would never hear like myself talking, so now I hear it in the in my headphones. Oh, you can hear yourself in your headphones. That's freaky. I never did before until I updated the software. So now it's like it's weird. So there's like a slight, so sometimes, like I stop sometimes when I'm talking because I hear myself and I'm like, no, 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 that's not what I wanted to say. <laughs> that's not it. That's not it. And I don't know if it carries, I don't think it carries over to the, to the audio track. So I don't know. We'll find out. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah I can't believe he told him he did the homework on the bus. Yeah. So like, Ross does the homework on the bus. He writes the paper on the bus. Nauseates the teacher and gets an F. Like, I feel like if you eat, like, you only get an F if you do nothing at all. <laughs> First of all. Yeah. I don't think I ever actually got an F in high school. Like, what, you would get an F if you didn't, like, turn something in. You get, like, a zero. Yeah. But, like, I feel like to actually get, like, if you did some... Like, even if you didn't even put any effort into an assignment, you would at least get a D just because you passed something in. Exactly. Like, or, you turn something in, you, like, tried. But I went to a shitty public school, so, like, if even if you did that, you would get, like, a C, which is still a passing grade. Like, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> you can still get into, like, college with a C. Oh, yes. Exactly. Which, to... Mention to like to re mention your earlier quote. I was always on AOL in the afternoon, so yeah. that's why because I was doing C papers. Exactly, we were terrible, <laughs> terrible children. We were just like sitting in our homes talking on AOL about what were we talking about? Soap operas. 
uh, Sunset Beach, the soap opera, and yeah. just other shitty shows we probably watched at the time. Yeah. And whatever little drama we created in our little online group. world. Like, there was no drama. <laughs> yeah, I don't actually think we were probably one of those very few drama free groups. And then, like, I would have, like, a paper route too, so I'd have to, like, leave for a little bit and, like, do my paper route and then come back and do AOL again. <laughs> so I'd be like, I would leave for an hour. Yeah, I'd be like, you'd leave, like, go do something with your parents, but you'd probably come back. Yeah, and it, this was pre, like, you're always online, so you'd, like, sign off. You'd actually, like, shut off. Yeah, you have to sign off, and then you have to dial back and hope that not too many people are online in your area. At the same time. Because it's dial-up. Oh, yeah, like, I hated, like, when you wanted to go on, like, like 8 o'clock, you could not get on. Yeah. Like, 8 p.m. It was tough. Like, so, like, what, I would, like, but you couldn't leave, like... Even if you left it on and you left for a little bit, like let's say you like had to eat dinner mm-hmm. and you came back up like 15 minutes later, it would like sign you off for inactivity. Exactly. Yeah. So like you were just like, it's like you haven't done anything. So like I would just like, I would just put like, I would send an email and like send like a wave file. So it would be like doing something for like a half hour, <laughs> like a, a 30 second like clip of me saying like, eh! not even like a 10 second clip would take like 30 minutes to send. Oh my gosh. And I would send it to myself just so it would keep me online. Yeah. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Um, So anyway, so Ross falls asleep. So Ross has to rewrite the paper and then he's like in the kitchen again. I jumped ahead. And his parents are like, you're not watching the Brady Bunch anymore. So of course, what does he do? He watches the Brady Bunch. So he has this, like, TV. He has it, like, underneath his book or his folder or whatever. Yeah, he's, like, got this clunky mobile portable device type thing hidden, like, between his books. And as soon as the parents go away, he, like, pulls it out and he starts watching. And then he falls asleep, like, right away. Yeah, he falls asleep, like, at the table, like, flopped over on top, his head on the TV. I don't think... And he has this crazy... Brady dream. Before we get into the Brady dream, I don't think I can yep. actually fall asleep at a table or at a desk or anything like that. Like, what about you? Um, I have fallen asleep once at my desk in college, and that was because I had the flu and it was just like hitting in like right during that class period. And I've never fallen asleep at a table. I have almost fallen asleep in a bathtub. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can see like a bathtub because you're like laying down and like yeah, maybe but... if you had the flu because you're like ill, but. Yeah, but I'm not going to just like be sitting where I am right now and be like, okay, fall asleep. Yeah, like, no. I just can't, like, I'm not comfortable. Like you're sitting up, you're like over like a hard surface. The chair is probably not like the best chair in the world unless you have yeah, like, an I'm... ergonomic chair. I need to be in a very specific position in my bed to fall asleep. And it's horizontal. <laughs> yeah. I, You know, I have to have my legs a certain way. I have to be, like, a certain way with my arms. Or I can't fall asleep. So I'm not going to fall asleep on a table. Which is why I've never fallen asleep on a plane or a bus or a train, like, in a car. Like, even if, like, I'm yeah, like a I, passenger in a car, like, I can't even, like, fall, like, fall asleep. Like, I do, like, cross-country, like, trips, and it's just, like, oh, you can nap in a car. I'm like, I can't, like, nap in a car. <laughs> yeah, I can't either, but I think it's for a different reason. Because <laughs> I don't like, if there's just, like, a sudden movement or something, I freak out. And, I'm like, wait, what's happening? Yeah, like. Because you, of that car accident I was in, so. And if you, like, close your eyes and, like, you're moving, it, it's weird. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. Like, I would have to be, like, heavily medicated Um, to fall asleep in the car. Well, like, there are times where I have, like, I'm on a plane and someone's like, oh, take, like, a Klonopin. You'll, like, you'll forget all about it and, like, fall asleep. And I'm like, I still didn't. Like, I was, I just felt like I was a zombie from The Walking Dead just on a plane. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to sleep, but I couldn't. And I just sat there while, like, the world moved underneath me but i don't know well like some bad sitcom played on the tv screen in front of me exactly but but ross manages to fall asleep at the kitchen table and he basically he he wakes up 
And he's just like standing up and he's like at the top of the Brady stairs, like in the living room. And he, he walks mm-hmm. downstairs. He's like confused. He's got like his bathrobe on, which I guess is like this blue terry cloth bathrobe, which he apparently wears all the freaking time from what I could find out. So like his character is known for wearing this like terry cloth bathrobe. Yeah. He's just known for always wearing this blue bath bathrobe. So he wakes up and he like kind of knows where he is. Well, he doesn't like wake up. He just kind of like materializes. Like he's like, wait, I'm in the Brady house. This is awesome. So he like runs downstairs really fast and he sees Carol and Mike. Because it is the Brady set. It is 100% the Brady set. Yeah, totally the Brady. Because they every, it was like too legit. It was legitimate Brady set. Yeah. It was better, a better, like it was definitely like a recreation of. Not like what was the one we watched last year? The um, very Brady Christmas. Yeah, that was. I mean, there was probably parts of the Brady set. I think that was mostly the Brady set, but I think they updated the decor from the seventies, sixties, fabulous to eighties pastel southwestern it, kind of thing. But in this episode, they decided to go back to like the early seventies, like Brady ish. Yeah, I think this was, like, before they did the Brady Bunch movie. A Very Brady Christmas. The one that we watched. Yeah. Okay. Definitely, because it was pretty, like, it was too, like, legitimately the Brady Bunch set. So he, like, walks on the stage. He's excited. Carol and Mike are, like, in the living room. Carol is drinking coffee. Carrie, Carol was drinking more coffee than I think Dave Nelson from News Radio would drink in an episode. And then... So, we then find out that, like, in this, like, hallucination, that mm-hmm. Ross is, like, a lost Brady child named Chuck. Chuck Brady? Yes, he is now Chuck Brady. But he has, like, that same, like, late 80s, like, wavy hair, like, the sh- Yeah, he's got his, like, 80s party guy, not really a mullet kind of hair. He doesn't have that, like, 70s perm. And so, yeah. Mike Brady... It's just like he's commenting on that. He's like, Chuck, you need to do something about your hair. You need like a nice tight perm like the rest of us Brady kids have. Like, yeah, well, Chuck's like, I'm not cutting my hair. And Mike's like, I didn't ask you to. I wanted you to get a perm. <laughs> and Chuck's like, perm? And Mike's like, yeah, that way our hair doesn't get in our eyes when we're fixing our bicycle. There was this like whole reference that throughout this whole episode, like that the Brady Bunch kids, or at least the boys, are always fixing their bikes. Yeah, they're like, where's Greg? Oh, he's out fixing his bike. Do you ever, like, did you ever get that, like, energy or essence from episodes? Because I never felt like that came up. <laughs> I think it's one of those things, like, you'll notice if you're watching a marathon, where you're like, okay, they just fixed their bike for, like, the last five episodes. They've been out in the backyard fixing their bicycles. Well, actually, you know? yeah, you're probably right, because, like, that's why, I like, Carol is, like, drinking coffee fucking nonstop, mm-hmm. and the kid, the boys are fixing their bikes, so, like, maybe it's just, like, they mention that, like, once or twice an episode, and Carol always has a fucking coffee mug in her hand. Yeah, exactly, that's what it is, because you always pretty much see Carol, like, in the kitchen with Alice, either just getting off the phone, or she's just drinking coffee, because she's not the one cooking, because Alice does all the cooking. Yeah, I guess you're right. She, and uh, Carol didn't work, right? No, she didn't. I don't know what Carol did all day. She sh- totally could have been a housewife. Yeah, they had... They had, uh, what's her face? Alice. And then Carol was just there. She was there to give, like, moral support, maybe? I guess? I don't know. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Who knows? Do, uh, do you know what? I had a thought. Okay. All right, so... In the, like probably like a few years after this. All right, so the mm-hmm. the kid who played Ross, he also played like four or five years later played Greg Brady on the Brady Bunch movies that came out. Yes, he did. All right, so my thought is the Brady Bunch movies took place like in modern times, so it took place in the nineties. But the Brady Bunch characters thought they lived in the seventies. Yeah, they still had that like seventies innocence. I, I bet you it was be, like inspired by this episode because only because like the character of Ross is living in the Brady Bunch world, mm-hmm. 
And it's like, it's still the 70s and it's still like the paisley and the polyester pants and the perms. And just like, and all the characters are just doing the same thing they did in the seventies. Yeah, it's like I bet you the people who made the Brady Bunch movie were like inspired by this episode. They had to have been. And um, I would even I would not be surprised if it was like the same write-in or like production staff. Like there's some like weird tie, only because the kid who plays. Greg Brady is Ross from this episode of Day by Day. So, like, I don't know. I was just like, wow, that's, that's, like, weirdly suspicious. Like, there has to be a connection, I think, besides him. Only because, like, a year after this, probably, like, a year after this Day by Day episode, there's, like, a Brady Bunch Christmas movie, but it takes place in, like, modern times, and the Brady Bunch is, like, upgraded to, like, what the world is like, and they didn't, yeah. like, they didn't live in this, like, cornucopia well, utopia. and then they're also... Did I mean utopia or cornucopia? I am, I, I think you mean utopia. Cornucopia. Cornucopia is that thing you put on your Thanksgiving table that looks like a horn and it's got all the veggies falling out of it. I used to call it the Thanksgiving tornado. The Thanksgiving tornado? Yeah, it looked like a Thanksgiving tornado. Am I, I right? don't think I ever thought of that. <laughs> So anyway, so so now Ross is Chuck Brady. He's like living yeah. in this weird Brady world, and everything just like keeps repeating, basically. Yeah, like he meets Bobby and Peter, and they're like, "Yeah, we signed you up to run for school president." And he's like, "Oh crap!" Because Marsha, who is very pregnant looking, all right. So Mary McCormick. Uh, was pregnant. <laughs> was definitely pregnant during the filming of this episode, and they made no effort to hide it. Not even not like, at all. It was hilarious. They didn't have her stand behind a couch or hold up like a bouquet of flowers or like they didn't have like the books in front or anything. It no. was just like there's a very pregnant Marsha Brady <laughs> who's on the cheerleading squad, and she's not like like beginning pregnant. She's probably like. Seven months along at this point. Yeah, she she's pretty far along. She's not like too far along where she can't move, but the baby bump is there. You can't hide it. But she's at the, all. she's the only Brady daughter who they brought back. So instead of bringing back Cindy and Jan, they they use Julie Louis Dreyfus and Courtney Thorne Smith as, as like the, cheerleaders. Uh, cheerleaders, yes. So, so if you ever have wanted to watch Julia Louis Dreyfus as a cheerleader with Courtney Thorne Smith, you need to go watch this episode for that alone because they are entirely out of sync. You know, I'll have to watch that again because I. <laughs> now that I'm thinking like about it, they're not doing the same thing at all. <laughs> it is hilarious. That's probably why they're like the maybe they, they went over it a couple times and they're like, okay, we'll do this. And then we'll do this, and maybe this, and then it looks totally different. <laughs> That's probably why the show got canceled. Probably because they couldn't like. Do, do you think that the, like this Brady Bunch themed episode was like like that? We have to save the show. Like we should do a Brady Bunch episode, and this will like bring viewers in. It's gotta be because I I can't even figure out why I would have watched it otherwise. Like, what was this on NBC? Yeah, it was on NBC. This was a primetime show. I could just picture... It was not a syndicated show. This was a primetime NBC show. Was this like a Thursday night show? Like a must-see TV night? Um, I want to say it was Monday night, but I don't know for sure. Like, I want to say this was on like at 8, and then like Cosby was on at 8.30. And this... Sh oh, wait. Hi, like, it always worked. There was always like a weird like time shift for like musty tv that like never worked was it eight mm -hmm. or eight thirty i think it was eight eight well i feel like they had like a strong start and then like nine had like a big show and like eight thirty they would mm -hmm. like just do like filler so yeah i have it swapped probably yeah it's depend i think it really depends uh what well because eight o'clock was when the cosby show was on on thursday all right so i bet you like cosby would be like eight i bet you this show would be like eight thirty and then like Cheers would be on at nine. Yeah. Or maybe so nine thirty. Nine Cheers had like was a more like 
mature themed? Cheers was definitely on at like nine. Was okay. So what would be on after Cheers? Uh, Night Court. Okay. Do you have that? Um, do you still have that app that like tells you like what what night things were on or whatever? Uh, give me a sec. It was actually just I just googled the information. I found like old TV listings. I wish I had bookmarked <laughs> it though. Maybe we should just like buy old TV guides and just go by that. <laughs> we should just be like, okay. Because like when Ooh, we when we think back of like, oh, I bet you like Night Court was on like nine thirty. But you have to think of like probably like the four hundred shitty shows that never lasted that were probably on. Yeah. Like things you forget about. Oh, totally. This was on Monday nights at eight thirty. This is a Monday night show? Oh, no, no, no. Sunday. Sunday night. Wow. NBC had comedies on Sunday? I thought they just did, like, TV movies at that point in time. Well, this is what it was. This was their scat- schedule. Schedule? Seven. Schedule. Seven and 7.30 was, like, the magical world of Disney. And then 8 o'clock was Family Ties. 8.30 was Day by Day. And then it was the NBC Sunday night movie. Which was like a TV movie. Yeah, it was like a TV movie or a mini series because Monday night they did movies too. Don't you miss that? Don't you miss those like old TV movies or like the mini series? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> That's why I find them on YouTube or Netflix and I watch the hell out of them. Like I looked up the mini series for um, Scruples and I would not stop until I finished watching it. We definitely have to do a mini series at some point in time. Yes. Hey, do you want to know what the Thursday night lineup was? Yes, this year. Okay. It was Cosby Show at 8. Okay. A Different World at 8.30. Wow. I didn't know they were like on back-to-back. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then, um, excuse me, Cheers at 9. Okay. And then Dear John at 9.30. Dear John's the one we forget about. Yeah. Well, do we know the premise of Dear John? It was like a guy whose wife left him and left him a Dear John letter. And then he's like in a support group. We have to find an episode of that. I only know that because my mother watched that show. Do you think we can find it? Is it on YouTube? Oh, yeah. We can find one episode. There's got to be at least one episode. Even like I would watch half an episode. Yeah. Want me to try to look it up right now? Or should we do this? You can, yeah. Uh, we'll do it later. We'll, we'll yeah, I, I can tell you that Night Court that season was on at on Wednesday night. So like NBC had a lot of sitcoms and they had a lot of sitcom nights. Yeah, NBC used to be like full of awesome sitcoms, and now well, now it's mostly like drama and reality, and they like throw all their sitcoms in like a one hour block. <laughs> yeah, and they're not even that good. I, what do they have now? I don't even know. I, think I don't know. The think, only yeah. okay, I only watch two things off of NBC right now. I watch Days of Our Lives and The Blacklist. But didn't NBC cancel every, like, all their comedies? Pretty much. I think they brought they got some new. They have a uh, something called Undateable. Oh, actually, Undateable is live tonight. I believe. <laughs> I guess. Actually, I kind of like Undateable. It has it. Chris DeLia in it and Brett Morin. It's actually kind of funny. Never watched it, so. It was a summer. It was always on in the summer, but now they're doing like they're doing live episodes. Man, that's interesting. So it was it was just like a it was a basic run of the mill sitcom ish kind of show about just like a bunch of men in their thirties who are undateable. Mm-hmm. It was okay. It, it like it was one of those shows that would just air in like the summer months. It was like a leftover, yeah. but it got like okay ratings. So they just like kept renewing it. So like now. They just were like, you know what? Let's just do it like live. They, actually, the last year's season finale, they did like a live episode, mm-hmm. and it was like the like their highest rated their highest rated episode. So then they're like, let's just do every episode live. So I don't know that that could either be like great or it could be a hot mess. Yeah. Okay. So the nineteen eighty eight eighty nine season of NBC had way more sitcoms than I even thought. Because it's got Family Ties and Day by Day. It's got the Hogan family, Alf. I love the Hogan family. <laughs> Night Court, 
It had um, Baby Boom and Nick and Hillary. Baby Boom. Were... Baby Boom was like, look who's talking. Yeah. I remember that show. I used to watch that show. Even though the movie is definitely not like, look who's talking. Of course, it had the Cosby show, A Different World, Cheers, and Dear John. And then it had 227, Amen, The Golden Girls, Empty Nest. Man, NBC, we got to talk about your lineup one of these days. 227 was on until the late 80s? Yeah. Wow, I thought that was like like late 70s. Mm-mm. I didn't know it went on that long. Holy fuck. No, it was like a mid to late 80s, early 90s type show. Damn. It was part of that Saturday night block of comedies that NBC used to have. Yeah, they had like Growing Pains. It was like a big, like they had like hits. Growing Pains nights. was on ABC. Oh, shit, sorry. But it was Saturday night, though, right? Okay, good. You didn't have my uh, song playing that I started singing. Oh, I didn't know Growing Pains was on ABC. I don't know. I... Mm-hmm. So, but, like, Saturday night though, was a big night, though, right? Yeah, Saturday night used to be, like, a big TV night. N- I'm looking at this. And you had all kinds of, like... If you wanted a comedy on a Saturday night, you went to NBC. And then uh, ABC and CBS both had all kinds of dramas. It doesn't look like any of them lasted very long, but they tried. Did people like just not go out then? I don't know. Well, you couldn't TiVo or DVR and the v- VCR was still just being invented. But, like, what would you go to the movies? Would you go to the movies during the week? Like, what? I don't know. Like, probably Friday night. Because Friday night, CBS had, like... Well, CBS had Dallas on Friday night. And that was, like, a huge fucking hit for them, right? Yeah. But That show was on for, like, 40 years. And then they, like, brought it back? It was on for, like, 11 years. And then it got brought back for, like... Four. Yeah, so that's like a big like you don't bring back a show that's been on for eleven years on a like. Well, let's just let's just say Dallas was on Friday nights for like three years and it was like okay an okay hit. You wouldn't you wouldn't bring it back. Yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. Stumbling yeah. over my words. Where were we in this Brady uh, Bunch episode? I mean, day by day um... episode. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the Brady dream. We kind of haven't like we haven't been very like exact about everything because it's the brady bunch yeah there's not just, much to this episode there's really no actual like plot real content it's just like little jokes about the brady bunch over and over again like they pretty much just keep doing that like class president like who's going to be the class president is going to be jim yeah, but also things, like, chuck they, is running <laughs> yeah you kind of just get this whole thing where you kind of get introduced to what little points they're going to bring up and then they just start to replay over and over again. Like Carol with the coffee or Mike with the ukulele or the boys wanting Chuck to run for president. Marsha being like, how dare you? Making posters. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, making posters, making coffee. Just over and over again. Just the- Or the, where's Greg? Out fixing his bike because you don't see Greg in this episode. Yeah, they keep bringing him like fixing the bikes, and and someone's like, "Oh, he's not like Chuck's like he's not riding his bike." He's like, "No, we don't ride bikes in this field. We just fix them." Yeah, because Chuck was like, "Let's go to the mall," and they're like, "The what?" They're like, "How do we get there?" He's like, "We ride our bikes. We don't ride our bikes. We fix our bikes." <laughs> there, there's like a part there where Carol Brady like references like, "This is my twenty seventh coffee today." Yeah, I had like, nothing like the twenty seventh cup of coffee. I had, like, two cups of coffee today. One was a decaf. One was, like, regular coffee. I thought I was going to die just from that. Like, I could not imagine having 27 cups of coffee. I don't even think it's possible to have 27 cups of coffee in a day. I mean, well, we have to think. How big is the cup she's actually using? I don't even care. Like, if you could have, like... I don't think it's one. I don't think it's even that big. All right. Let's say they're in half. Let's say they're, like... I couldn't even have 12 cups of coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's just ridiculous. You should be, like, dead from a caffeine overdose. And I just don't, like, I just, like, shivered just thinking of it. Yeah. 
But she's like, mm, nothing like that 27th cup of coffee. Like, what the hell? I was like, how are your bowels not, like, dead? How are you alive? <laughs> like, how are you functioning enough to even say that? <laughs> Oh, you know what else is also funny about this episode too? So, um, Bobby and Peter in it, but they're like clearly in their thirties, trying to like pass off as like preteens. Yeah, they got like the facial hair. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, they they did no, they did nothing in this episode to make it seem like that the Brady Bunch kids had aged or were impregnated at all. Yeah, it was hilarious. They're just like, let's just throw them up there. It's like nobody thought to say, hey, uh, listen, Mike looking Lamb, let's maybe shave off the facial hair this week. We'll give you a nice little extra $500 if you do it. <laughs> and so. so Chuck Brady slash Ross, he realizes he's in this nightmare. Like it becomes a nightmare, basically. The same yeah, thing. Yeah, it's a nightmare of things repeating over and over and over and overlapping. And he's like trying to like get out of it and he can't. And so now like now it's getting like weird where it's just like Mike just keeps playing the ukulele. Marsha's doing like cheerleader moves. Carol just keeps yeah. coming out with coffee. Bobby and Peter and have Ross their... is like, well look at this paper. Look at this paper. And the Mike and Carol are like, yeah, well, whatever. You did your best, sweetheart. Yeah. He's like, don't you care about my grades? They're like, obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> so Hello? Ross wakes up from this like nightmare. He wakes up. He's like back in his kitchen in his robe. And he's like, oh, it's just a dream. It was just a horrible, just horrible dream. In. And his parents are like, Ross, it's wrong. And then he realizes they're dressed like Mike and Carol from his dream. <laughs> And then he freaks out again. And then he wakes because up again. <laughs> it's better than a dream within a dream. <laughs> like, have you ever had a dream within a dream? Not that I recall. I don't even think it's possible, to be honest. Like, I think you more have, like, a dream, and then you kind of just, like, slip into a next, another dream. You don't have a dream within a dream. So that's kind of maybe what it was. Like, we're going to, like, Inception territory right here. I guess so, yeah. Like, the top is spinning, and it's like, hold on, the top is stopped. What did that mean again? I remember. It's been so I, long since I've seen that movie. I haven't seen Inception. Oh, we'll have to do it. Actually, let's not, because I never want to see that movie again. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason I didn't see it, is it didn't seem like something I wanted to support. Oh, yeah, you're not going to like it. So, so Ross, Ross wakes, wakes up, up again. He wakes up from his, his dream with a dream. His dad's waking him up, and, like, Ross is like, I'll never do it again. He's so happy to see his parents, and he just, like, goes up to bed. Like, just, and like, he, calmly, like, you know what? Yeah. I have a paper due in, like, six hours. I just had, like, a weird nightmare. Mm -hmm. I fell asleep at my kitchen table. My neck probably hurts. Like, every bone in my body is probably, like, out of whack. I'm just going to go upstairs and go to sleep now. Yeah. Not like I'm going to try to bang Courtney Thorne Smith. I mean, gosh. <laughs> dude. Like, does well, Courtney Thorne Smith live in the house? Did we, did we no, assume? I don't think she lives in the house. Oh, never mind. Then. Well, he... Do they ever have, like, a romantic subplot with, like, him and Courtney Thorne Smith? Ooh, um... Is it... What I recall from the series is he's always chasing her, and she's kind of like, I don't think so. She's like a... Because I think she's a little bit older, and he's still in high school, so... Yeah, she's like a like cunty, like, 21-year-old. Yeah, she's like the college senior or something, and he's like this annoying high school kid. She's like, you're not mature enough for me. I need a mature man. You're Someone like just a little age. puppy dog. Yeah. Where is Courtney Thornsmith these days? Uh, she recently finished a stint on Two and a Half Men. I thought the show ended. Yeah, she it did last season. Oh, so, so was she on it that. last year? Yeah, she was on it for actually a few years. Oh shit, well, she was. Yeah, so what? She was like I didn't. I don't yeah, watch the show. So I don't know. She well, okay, so she did Melrose Place, of course. 
Allie McBeal. And, then, and Allie McBeal. And then she did According to Jim. Oh, yeah, and then I forgot she did she um, According to Jim. I forgot about that. And then she went to uh, Two and a Half Men. So she's been constantly working. She hasn't, like, she hasn't, like, is she in the mom role now? Like, she plays, like, somebody's mom or something? Oh, yeah, she's, like, totally the hot mom. Is she still hot? Like, what's her deal? I don't even know. Oh, yeah, she's still smoking hot. <laughs> All right, we'll have to Google her. She's, she's actually probably hotter now than she was in the Melrose Place days. For real? Damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was kind of... I didn't like... Um, who was she? Allison on Melrose Place? Yeah, she was Allison. Yeah, I always hated Allison. I remember liking Allison, and then I tried to rewatch Melrose Place, and I was like, I can't do this. I hate all these people. Yeah, I can't get through Melrose Place. And I thought I liked it. And I was like, I can't even... And, like, I thought um, Heather Locklear, like, a man... What was her name? Amanda? Mm-hmm. I thought she was, like, the baddest bitch back in the day. I'm like, wow, she's fucking awful. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. and, um, Billy, played by Andrew Shu, is fucking awful. They're all awful. It's just a fucking horrible show. I don't even know how this show was, like, popular. Ever. Damn you, Tori Spelling! Like, there's no way this show is, like, great. Like, like it'll be forgotten. Like, I tried to watch it, and it was just... No. <laughs> oh, it's it's the and I worst. I loved the- it back in the day. I loved it back in the day, but there's definitely a point where I fell out of love with that in 90210. But you know what though? Like I go back and I watch 90210, and I'm like, oh my god! Like Shannon Doherty as Brenda trying to steal like an outfit from a store is still fun to watch because <laughs> it's so ridiculous. And it's like there, like 90210 is still fun to watch. Like you will find like old episodes of when they're in high school and you're like holy fuck like this this is still relatable in a weird way it's still fun to watch and then i'm like you know i'm gonna watch an episode of melrose place because they're probably like closer to my age now and i'm like no this this show is fucking yeah. awful the show is awful <laughs> and then like, i actually think i like melrose place 2.0 better than the original oh yeah and melrose Place 2.0 was fucking awful, but it was much better than Melrose Place, the original. <laughs> Only yeah. because they, like, CWized it, and I love, like, a, like a shitty CW show is my favorite show. Like, there's so many great shitty CW shows. Yeah. Uh, you got the shitty Melrose Place, the shitty Now 2.0, um, what's that one on uh, the New York one? Gossip Girl. Fucking Gossip Girl. Never rewatching Gossip Girl. You can't. Fuck you, Gossip Girl. Gossip Girl is unrewatchable, but if you watch it once, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, like I start, I watched Gossip Girl the first season, and then I just like didn't have time to keep up with it. So I rewatched it a few years ago, like on Netflix, and I was like so into it. I was like watching episode after episode after episode. And then it gets really. And shitty, then I got right? to the point where I got caught up with the TV episode, TV series, and I'm like, "Why is Blair back with this abusive asshole? <laughs> <laughs> and who the fuck is Gossip Girl? And then they reveal who Gossip Girl is, and you're like, "What the fuck?" And it makes no sense. It makes no None. sense. <laughs> it makes absolutely no sense at all. There are like a dozen other characters. Who could have been fucking Gossip Girl, and it would have made perfect sense. Or and they could have just made up a new character, or it could have just it been could Kristen have just Bell, been, like somebody who they could have CGI'd into like the backdrop of like a dozen different scenes to show that they were always watching. And they actually got Kristen Bell, who did the voice of the Gossip Girl, to be in the <laughs> last episode. They could have just been like yeah. they could have just CGI'd her into the show. <laughs> yeah, but no. I don't know. Oh my god! Uh, um, another good, another good CW show was what's the um? Actually, it's not that good of a show, but I still watch it. What's the one like the um? It's like kind of Games of Thronesy. It takes place in like olden days. Rain. Oh yeah, Rain. It's so bad, but it's fucking. It's like they made a soap opera, like a nighttime soap opera, that took place in like the fourteen hundreds. Mm-hmm. That's Rain, based on Mary Queen of Scots. Yeah. Yeah. They, well, they base it on like actual historical characters, but it's completely made up. Like these, oh, yeah. they just the people who write the show just know the names. It's like Nostradamus, 
Mary they're kind of like, us. okay, what's a loose outline? What happened between these people? Okay, thanks. That's they, all we need. We don't need any actual information besides names and kind of an idea what happened. Thanks. They went on Wikipedia. They read like the 30, like two second, 32 word description of Mary Queen of Scots. And like, that's a show. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, like some of the episodes are really good. Some are really bad, but you give or you take. Yeah, I kind of don't watch anything on the CW anymore. I don't know. It's kind of my favorite network. I, I'm not going to lie. I, well, there's it's like just the only nothing. network television I still watch. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking about the other day. I was like, I don't watch anything on the CW. Well, there's there's the Arrow, there's the Flash, and there's going to be yeah. a new spin off of the two. And then there's yeah, iZombie. There like, everything <laughs> I liked got canceled. So Yeah, well. They got rid of all like the the weird like drama, like um the Rachel Bilson show. Yeah, Heart of Dixie. I loved Heart of Dixie. It had that a good was my run. Favorite show. It had a good run though. Yeah, it did. It had a really good run. I was okay with it. <laughs> but now they're now they're sticking to like the the DC superheroes. Yeah, everything is superheroes, and then they have a random night with like Jane the Virgin and my crazy ex girlfriend. Um, I know so, Jane the Virgin, but I don't know my crazy ex girlfriend. Yeah, they just started, so okay. Yeah, I uh, I didn't watch them, so we'll see. So I think we got through. Did we get through this episode of uh, David? I have no idea. Oh, oh, we have one more part. Okay. It's okay. So Ross goes up to bed, and the parents are like, "He's dreaming about the Brady Bunch. He's obsessed." And the mom is just like done with the Brady Bunch. And so the dad starts cleaning up, and he turns on this stupid portable TV, and the Brady Bunch theme oh, comes on. So, of course, he gets sucked into it. Okay, his mom comes back down, and she gets sucked into the theme song as well. So then you got both parents hunched over the stupid little TV screen, singing along to the theme song at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning. So it was that late in the night? That's what I'm guessing. I mean, what time do you think these people went to bed? I have no idea, but my next question is, is what, like, syndicated channel back in the day he did a week-long, or like a weekend-long Brady Bunch marathon? Um, I don't know. Like, probably one of your, like, local channels. But would they, like, like disrupt local... their whole, like, week of programming for, like, a Brady Bunch marathon? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe if they like just got the syndicated rights to the Brady Bunch. Yeah, I guess you're right. I don't or know. Or something. And they're like, the Brady Bunch. Or I maybe what... like Eve Plum was coming to town for a grocery store opening. So they had, they're like, let's celebrate Eve Plum by playing the Brady Bunch all week long. Or Cindy. <laughs> or Seasonal Cindy. Yeah. So what did you think of Day by Day? Um, it was a little weird. It was very weird to see Julia Louis-Dreyfus, not as Elaine, but still with the Elaine hairdo. Um, it's weird to see Julia Louis-Dreyfus, young, who still looks <laughs> exactly the same today. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Because she's like on Veep now, and she's yeah. like in her 50s, and she looks exactly the same. And she does all those old Navy commercials. That's true. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but she totally had, like, it's weird. Like, all right, so there was, like, the Seinfeld curse. Mm-hmm. This, this could be, like, our post-mortem, the Seinfeld. All right, so. Let's, all right, so Elaine, Julia Wee Jarvis became Elaine Bennis. Seinfeld ended. Yes. And there was this whole thing, like, everyone that's on Seinfeld is now cursed. So, like. Jason Alexander had like a show that was canceled, or like three shows that were canceled. Michael Richards yeah, had shows like, that were canceled. Yeah, and, like all three think, of them had shows that were canceled. I think Julie Weiss Dreyfus even had shows that were canceled. She did. She is the one who broke the the so called curse, though. Um, it was the New Adventures of Old Christine. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, which is not a good show. <laughs> it is not. No. But have you ever watched Veep? I haven't because I don't have HBO. Oh, uh, okay. It's a great show. 
I hear it's a great show. I would love to watch it, but I don't have HBO. Well, um, I can send you my brother's you know. information. I can send you my brother's <laughs> information, and you can watch it <laughs> in its entirety because it has Veda from My my Girl in it. Mm-hmm. And Julie Redreyfus. Buster Bluth from Arrested oh Development. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's Buster. the perfect cast of characters. Um, it's been on for like four years. They do short seasons, and it's just... I, I don't even know how to describe the show. It's just... It's a madcap. Mm-hmm. And if this is like the, my first introduction to Julie Louis Dreyfus. Like I didn't even know about Elaine Bennis. I would still be amazed. Only because like when you first start watching, you're like, oh, it's Elaine Bennis, it's Elaine Bennis, and then, like, then you quickly get over it. <laughs> yeah. Like, she definitely broke the Seinfeld curse. Oh, yes, she did. And now Jason Alexander and Michael Richards will just, like, rot in whatever cursed hell they live in. I think Michael Richards cursed himself a few years ago, so. And actually, Jason Alexander is doing good, I'm not going to lie, because he replaced Larry David in, like, Larry David's play. Yeah. And Jerry does, Jerry does like, he just wants, he doesn't, want to do movies or sitcoms he just wants to do stand up but he had like, yes that and he little... is amazing jerry seinfeld is amazing if you get to see him live oh yeah totally great and then he has like that dumb little like comedians and coffee with cars i mean yes. like dumb but like not in like a stupid but like in like a it's a quaint yes comedians getting coffees in car i don't even know what it's called i can't even say i don't anything. even know what it's called but i know what you're talking about yeah it's him driving around in cars with comedians getting coffee yeah, he he can do whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> he is Jerry Seinfeld. He can do whatever he wants, and that's awesome. And I've heard him get like interviewed, and they're like, "Do you ever want to be on TV again?" He's like, "No, I've already done TV." He's like, "Why do I want to do TV again?" Yeah, why would I want to do it again if I've done it? And he's like, "Stand up is my game." And but he's like, "But I like cars, and I like coffee, and I like comedians, so I just want to do this like dumb little thing that's like ten minutes long." Yeah. So I don't know whatever works for him. So I don't think there's a Seinfeld curse. What do you think? I think it's that some of them were a little too anxious to have their own projects. And they did not pick good projects. No. And Larry David is obviously wildly successful. Yes. (laughs) Wayne Knight has worked his butt off for years. He just had a sitcom end on TV land. So. And what about Banya? How's Banya doing? I don't know. How is Banya doing? I haven't seen him in anything. Um, who knows? We'll we'll Hi. definitely explore the Banya mm-hmm. mystery in future episodes. This could yeah. be like an ongoing, um, a very special podcast mystery. Whatever happened to Kenny Banyan? Yeah, but I'm starting to venture into a blackout, so I think this would be a great time to uh, wrap up. <laughs> yes, it probably is. But join us next week. I believe we're watching um, Dennis the Menace. Yeah, I think we are going old school and watching Dennis the Menace. All right, so we're going to watch... Actually, this is is a good episode. I've seen it. It's the first episode of Dennis the Menace. Okay. Where is it available? It's on Hulu. You can watch it on Hulu.com. If you need my info, just send me a tweet at VeryPodcast. I will give you my password. You can watch the Dennis the Menace episode. Uh, <laughs> this is, is the episode of Dennis the Menace where they decided that he was too much of a menace, so they had to tone the show down. And keep in mind, this is like 1958 or 9, I don't even know when. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to watch this. It's a great, I have watched this episode like 11 times <laughs> and more. And you know what? There are so many great Dennis the Menace episodes. Mm-hmm. Like, I could just do, like, a separate podcast just about Dennis the Menace. Okay, like, do you know series. how many separate podcasts you could probably do on different TV shows? You've already got the plans for a 90210 podcast. You've got the Halloween podcast. And the My So-Called Life one? My So-Called Life, Dennis the Menace. You know what? Let's just fucking keep spinning off until till we die. As always, bye. Until next time, peace be with you.